Hi, I'm Spencer Shunk. I'm Brad Fraser. And this is... Old Movies for Young People. And today we're talking about The Maltese Falcon from 1941. What a lot of people consider to be one of the top 10 movies of all time. Directed by John Huston, screenplay by John Huston, based on the novel by Dashiell Hammett, and starring Humphrey Bogart, Mary Astor, Sidney Greenstreet, Elisha Cook Jr., Peter Lorre, and a host of others. Things get kicked off when Bridget O'Shaughnessy visits Sam Spade, played by Humphrey Bogart, and tells him that she's looking for protection. While his partner goes out to protect her against her gunman boyfriend she's gotten involved in, gets killed, and that's how Sam gets on the case. Help me, Mr. Spade. I need help so badly. I have no right to ask you. I know I haven't, but I do ask you. Help me. You won't need much of anybody's help. You're good. It's chiefly your eyes, I think, and that throb you get in your voice when you say things like, be generous, Mr. Spade. It turns out that she's in town after this uh, ancient object of uh, priceless value called the Maltese Falcon, and so are a bunch of other criminals. I warn you, if you attempt to prevent me, I shall certainly shoot you. Go ahead and search. You will please come to the center of the room. I have to make certain that you're not armed. This is the ultimate MacGuffin movie. Hitchcock had a MacGuffin in every movie, which is an object or a thing or something that everybody is looking for, that everybody wants, and the Maltese Falcon is the MacGuffin. You know what it is, I know where it is. That's why I'm here. Where is it? Where is it? You see, I must tell you what I know. But you won't tell me what you know. It's hardly equitable, sir. No, no. I don't think we can do business along those lines. I'll think again and think fast. I told that gun of yours you'd have to talk to me before you're through. Everybody we think is sympathetic is not sympathetic, and in fact, it's very hard to find anybody to like in this entire movie, including Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade, and it's a very Byzantine plot, and very talky, and interestingly, most of the action happens off screen. But the pace is like bam, 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 bam. You know, and it's basically a battle of wits right through to the end of the movie over who's going to get the priceless falcon. Well, sir, we're all here. Now let's come in and sit down and be comfortable and talk. Sure. Oh. Get away. You're not gonna frisk me. Stand still, shut up. Take your paws off me. I'll make you use that gun. It's a movie about a bunch of liars trying to outlie one another. And Sam Spade's right in there, and it turns out he is the best liar of all. I can show Brian, our district attorney, that if he goes around trying to collect everybody, he's going to have a tangled case. But if he sticks to Wilmer here, he can get a conviction standing on his head. Get up on your feet. By the end of it, Nothing has changed. They don't even get the damn bird. The thing arrives, they think it's the bird, Best part. and nobody has Best changed. Part. No wonder we had such an easy time stealing it, you, you imbecile, you bloated idiot, you stupid fathead, you... <laughs> I think they get exactly what they deserve, and Sam escaping the web that he has wrapped himself up in is the climax. We're sitting on dynamite. We've only got minutes to get set for the police. Now give me all of it fast. When you first came to my office, why did you want Thursby shadowed? I told you, Sam, I thought he was betraying me and I wanted to find out. That's a lie. You had Thursby hooked and you knew it and you wanted to get rid of him before Jacoby came with the loot so you wouldn't have to split it with him. Isn't that so? He gives everybody else up to the cops and makes it look like he was doing the right thing the whole time, but we don't ever actually know that. We don't know if he changed his mind at the last minute and just kept himself an, an out. I have to say, I think this movie is overrated. It's too tied down in exposition. The only time we see anybody get shot is in kind of a quick mm. sort of flashback or a quick cut to, and the rest of the time we're sitting around in offices kind of threatening each other really uh, subtly. It's not bang, bang, shoot them up kind of thing. It's all the other stuff that happens. It's all the planning and the plotting, and that stuff carries us but through the But that's the shit that loses me. It's the planning mm. and the plotting, and by the time we get to the three quarters mark, it's like, who is this guy on a boat and how many people have been shot and who shot who and what the hell's going on? But don't you think that the dialogue is so fantastic that it kind of, it almost takes your mind off the fact that we're just having a bunch of scenes in hotel rooms and apartments. This is the second time that you've laid hands on me. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. They really make that shit work. I'm not bored for a second. 
It's it's true. Uh, they do make that stuff work. The acting is exceptional. Mm, Sydney Greenstreet, totally. more than anyone, is really amazing. You're going to admit it, or I'm going to search you. There's no third way. <laughs> I guess I believe you, but I really do. You are a character, if you don't mind my saying so. You palmed it. Yes, sir. That I did. <laughs> I must have my little joke now and then. And Sam Spade, despite being the most macho guy in the world, I think is the most latent homosexual in fiction. Look at the way he treats women, first of all. Okay. He's got Effie, his secretary, who he treats like a kid brother, kind of. He's got his partner's wife, who he's having sex with on the side, supposedly, who he treats like she doesn't matter at all. And then we've got Mary Astor. And he has this whole kind of, I'm in love with you, I'm not in love with you, I don't know if you're working right. me, I don't know if you're playing me. Sounds like a straight guy so far. But it's his reaction, particularly to Wilmer, that I find really telling. I didn't expect you till 5.25. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Keep on riding me. They're going to be picking iron out of your liver. <laughs> the cheaper the crook, the gaudier the fatter, huh? Inside every homophobe, there is an unhappy cocksucker. And this movie seems to be filled with unhappy cocksuckers to me. Mm. I'll give you that all the villains in the film are codified homosexuals to more or less degree. Really, uh, Mr. Cairo's not really codified at all. He's, he's not codified He's pretty all. obvious. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking of Sam Spade in that way, but uh, I can see how the repression turns into the hatred. But I mean, he, there's definitely a thing between him and women, right? Yes, it's, it's, but there's it's also a, central a thing between story. him it's a last and, scene. There's a thing between him and Sidney Greenstreet where Sidney Greenstreet keeps saying, oh, you're a wonderful guy, you're like us. And he keeps trying to enlist <laughs> into him. And it seems yeah. like he's saying to Sam, come out and just suck a fucking dick, dude. It's that whole John Huston, Humphrey Bogart, male movie star school of things where they all like to get together and hang out with the guys and get drunk and shoot things up and be fucking crazy. And there is something in that that's disturbing and I find slightly queer. But I don't think that means that this is a bad movie. In fact, it makes it more interesting to me, if anything. Yeah, it makes it more I'm not it. saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it's not one of the top ten movies in movie history. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. How would, you know, the millennials respond to this story that mm -hmm. is so homophobic, that is so sexist, that is from such a horrible, corrupt world, and we know how they hate anything horrible or corrupt <laughs> or even having fucking conflict for a second. So how are you going to sell this to those little snowflakes? That's what I want to know. It's about atmosphere. It's about mood. It's about establishing a feeling. You That's know what how I mean? Like that, that genre is not That's all how you're going to sell it to them? It's well, I've been selling it to them the whole time. Like, I, don't, I don't think you're not selling it to them by telling them all the stuff about the queerness and the subtext about Sam Spade. I think that is actually a selling point, and that's what's actually. But we're make talking about people watch. who don't even like queer people to be shown in a bad light in any situation, and there is nobody ad admirable in this movie, gay, straight, or otherwise, to be found anywhere. I mean, yes, yeah. you're not a typical representative. Right of your I guess generation. then I have to think about no one I know either because I could easily talk a lot of people I know into watching this movie. It's hard for me to just say, oh yeah, I guess my generation is stupid and they don't really like anything that has any stupid. depth or doesn't have any connection to the modern. scared of conflict. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Watch the movie and tell me I'm an asshole. And in fact, <laughs> none of you are snowflakes and you love conflict and hard-boiled detective shows. No one would be happier than me. You gotta weigh in. Help me out here. And that was The Maltese Falcon. And we'll see you next time on Old Movies for Young People.